Welcome to Honor the Wayne's Helmet. I'm Kyle Simmons. And my co-host, former Michigan and NFL offensive lineman Thomas Grimes, and a host of the ASAP Elite podcast, Rob Penn. How we doing today, guys? What up, though? What's going on, gentlemen? <laughs> Always be back. Last Saturday, the number three Michigan Wolverines defeated Nebraska 34-3 at the big house. Blake Corum had 162 yards rushing and a touchdown. Ronnie Bell had 72 receiving yards and a touchdown. And J.J. McCarthy went 8 of 17 for 129 yards and two passing touchdowns. So we'll start with Thomas, as always. What do you think of last week's game? Last week's game, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's just all about getting the job done, continuing to move forward as the ultimate prize is to get back to Indianapolis, get back in that Big Ten championship game. So overall, um, I give us as a team a solid A minus. Um, looking at the offensive line, we did give up that one sack. So, you know, that obviously brings the offensive line grade down a little bit. But, you know, it, w- it was the typical Michigan recipe that we've seen thus far. Pound the ball, pound the ball. As Rob was saying, we're going to tenderize those ribs um, coming out in the second half and uh, start going a little bit ver- a little bit more vertical in our attack. Um, definitely still would like to see J.J. Uh, work on that, that touch that he, he has. Um, getting the ball downfield, putting a little air into the ball. But overall, I think we had a solid performance. We went in we went in and did what we are supposed to do, what everyone was expecting us to do. And for the most part, um, as far as my knowledge is, we got out relatively injury-free. And as far as I'm concerned, other than just getting the W, that was the next biggest priority was getting out of this game injury-free mm-hmm. and getting ready to take on the fighting Illini. Man, it was a solid game. For the first time together, we put together a first half and a second half that was identical. You know, we scored 34 overall, 17 in the first half, 17 in the second half. You know what I'm saying? It's a complete game plan. But, you know, it got us ready for our first trap game. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be easy this week. You know, we're going to have to play some ball this week. But it's, it's all in tune getting us together for that, you know, that last Saturday of November. So, yeah, we're ready. Oh, I do want to talk about that uh that play when uh old boy tried to leap leap over our defender. <laughs> he got caught. <laughs> yeah. You see, that's what we call the Michigan way, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons why coaches always tell you never leave your feet. Once you're in midair, you're you're pretty much at the mercy of of, of the environment. And um the Wolverines definitely stuck the proverbial face in yeah. there. So so, um, you know, luckily that that, that corn husker came out unharmed. I, I'm guessing, uh, unless it was the adrenaline. I, I'm just <laughs> after that particular hit. I might I might have needed a series or two off just to go check on some things. Yeah, see, we we never see the alternative. We always see them completing that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. <laughs> this is the first time I saw somebody get de- decapitated in midair. Right. So yeah, we were ready. Yeah. No, that, that was that was definitely one of those. <laughs> so that's why you always keep your tackle with your head up. You always keep your head up. Yep, yeah, for sure. So as we get ready for uh, tomorrow's game, uh, we got the Fighting Illini coming into town here to Ann Arbor. They're uh, seven and three overall, four and three in the Big Ten. Uh, they actually were off to a really strong start, having six straight wins, and then they dropped their last two games to uh, Michigan State and Purdue. So I think they'll be pretty hungry to try to get back on track this week with a win. So, uh, Thomas, what can we do to make sure that that's not the case? Well, you know, I haven't been a part of a team where uh, the Illini did come in to Ann Arbor and to the big house and actually pulled off what I would consider an, an upset. Um, it's been done before. I, w- I was a part of that team. I want to say it was 1994. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's all about winning the turnover battle and continuing just to play tough physical football. I think the overall formula that we have brought to bear thus far throughout the season is continuing just to try to punish guys. Uh, Again, we have a very talented offensive line. We're playing very physical, physical up front. And as, you know, talking to some pundits and even some fans, you know, it's, it's boring football. Uh, this this is not an exciting brand of football in today's you know air raid full spread you know all go route sort of sort of deal. And as far as I'm concerned, because I'm an I'm an old school guy, obviously as an offensive lineman, 
I appreciate the physicality of the of the game and the way in which our guys are going out and doing their business. I appreciate what Coach Harbaugh is trying to instill within the team as far as I as far as our identity. Um, it's about being tough. It's about being smart. And again, if you're able to do those two things and win the turnover battle, more than likely you're going to be successful. So my keys to tomorrow's game is win the turnover battle and continue to break the will of the Illini. Take them into, into the deep water and just drown them with, with run after run after run. And then, JJ, let's show some touch. Let's show some, you know, we as I've said time and time again, the arm strength is there. Um, for the most part, I think the accuracy is there. I just want to see the touch when we start going vertical, dropping that ball in, into the bucket. I've seen him do it a couple of times, but as my coach would say, sun shines on the dog's behind every once in a while. So um, with that being said, consistency is going to be the key. I think that this needs to be a four-quarter game, you know, a 12-round fight, like I always say, you know, a little too. Uh, we need to prepare for next week. But at the same time, we can't take these guys lightly. Mm -hmm. This is a 7-3 football team, a good football team that was – just before two weeks ago was seven and one. You know, they could have easily came in here nine and one, ranked number 12 in the country. You know what I'm saying? They just had a couple hiccups against a couple teams that we just beat, beat, the, beat the snot out of. But still, that's not, uh, you know, that's not, you know, that's, you know, it has nothing to do with the price of tea in China, as they say. You know, we, they're there to come out. They're going to challenge us. We're going to have to come out and, you know, put together that Michigan football game, you know, that, that complete game. We're going to be running the ball from beginning to end. And uh, hopefully we can put 40 on these boards with 400 yards on the ground like we did it, uh, against our counterparts there in Pennsylvania. Well, I guess we're going to go right to the predictions then. So, Rob, what do you think is going to be your prediction for this game? You just said 40 points and 400 yards. So I said we need to. We need to, huh? It's a whole different you know, battle. Like, <laughs> I say, I say 27-16. Michigan, go blue. Go Blue. Thomas, what do you got for your prediction this week? Um, I think we're going to put up 30. Uh, I think at the, the – what I'm looking for is if by the half, if we have two to three touchdowns and then let our defense pretty much go in there and put in that work, um, I'm going to say 38, 38 to 21. 38. And that 21 is me being generous – on that end, but the line I do have some some uh, talented offensive weapons, and they're a well coached football team. So I'm looking to see how our defense fares against the uh, the Illini, and moving forward, what is going to be our ability to shut a team down? And if we can really just continue to go ahead and do what we've been doing in that second half, shutting teams down, letting our offense continue to put points on the board. We're going to be successful and get ready for that game on November 26. There you go. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it at uh, 33 to 13. I think we'll get to that 30, get to that 30 point mark. Uh, as far as far as the line, I think they'll find the end zone once a couple of field goals. So uh, 33 to 13, that's going to be my uh, prediction this week. So I yeah. think that's all we got. Anything you want to add, Rob? Go blue. Go blue. That's it, right? Yeah. All right. So hey, 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 I love it, bro. This is amazing. You know, I get to carry my flag around this country and people know where I'm from and know what I represent. You know what I'm saying? Without a question. And they can't say anything because this is not a fluke. This is the real deal. And that's all we have for this week's episode of Under the Wings Helmet. Tune in next week where we talk about the game against that team down south. I can't wait to hear some of Thomas's stories with that one. And also be sure to check us out on the Believe Network, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and Spotify. You can also watch us on ASAPElite.com, YouTube, and Athletes TV. For Thomas Guans and Rob Penn, I'm Kyle Simmons. Go Blue. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs>